Hey everyone, Surreal Canine here. Welcome back for more to Sky 3 <clears throat> Absence of Detention. Today, we are going to do the last group of unlockable characters, these being the Samurai, Shrine Maiden, Berserker, Hero, Majin, and Angel. Alright. After this, we will be moving on to the monster characters, who will hopefully be a lot easier to discuss just because of their, uh, monstery nature. <laughs> So yeah, you can see here that I've uh, got six of these guys. Saitama is making a return, which is pretty great. Alright, let's head into the practice map and start talking! Okay, first up, we have the Samurai and the Shrine Maiden. Both uh, very offensive type characters who uh, specialize in swords. As for their skills, uh, the Samurai learns six sword and four spear skills. The Shrine Maiden learns six sword and four bow skills. Aside from that, their uh, aptitudes, the Samurai favors speed and the Shrine Maiden favors hit. Now, their abilities. The Samurai has Chivalry, which increases damage when attacking from the front. Pretty nice. The Shrine Maiden, on the other hand, has Calm Waters, which, attacks, which increases her attack power against a single target. Samurai has Armor Pierce. 25% uh, of his attack power becomes the fixed value for a normal attack. I'm assuming this means uh, the attack ignores defense in exchange for doing like a fixed damage. Might have been something good for me to test out, but uh, it's a little late for that now. <laughs> Mind's Eye on the Shrine Maiden uh, nullifies the accuracy bonus when attacked from the side or behind, so... Uh, attacking her from the front, side, behind, it does not make a difference with regard to accuracy. The Samurai also has Kamikaze. Crit damage doubles when your own HP is under 25%. The Shrine Maiden has Euthanasia. Normal attack will one-shot a target with less than 25% HP. That could be pretty good if you're going against someone like Classroom Ball, I don't know. <laughs> you just barely fail to kill them and they still have so much HP left that you want to just kill them already. I don't know. Finally, the Samurai has Divine Killer, which increases damage against humans. Or human-type units, rather. Obviously, we don't have uh, any playable humans here besides the main characters. <laughs> The Shrine Maiden has Cleanse Evil, which increases damage against monsters. Alright, alright, now, let's show off their special skills. Why not? Wait, what is past me doing? I'm not entirely sure. <laughs> Such is the price of me, uh, me recording all this way before it's time to uh, do the thing. Oh, Bullet Breaker. Hit, yeah, it hits three units in a triangle. That's pretty neat. And Rutil, of course, being Rutil, she manages to dodge it anyway, like a boss. <laughs> Reverse Pico Cut. Kid friendly, mother approved for all ages. We'll see about that. To hammer slash. <laughs> I'm not entirely sure what the point of that was, given it did zero damage. And again, that's just because Rutil was such a high level anyway. But, uh, yeah. That was pretty okay, I guess. Shining Kill Slice sometimes becomes a death blow. Oh no, it's the return of the whimsical ring. <laughs> Is that a wooden katana he used? That is... No, that's just a regular katana with the wooden sheath, or something, I don't know. Sometimes, the sprite graphics leave much to be desired. <laughs> By the way, are you guys excited about uh, Disgaea 2 PC? Because I am excited about Disgaea 2 PC. I wonder if there's going to be more content involved that I'm going to have to put up in my Let's Play. I've kind of been lagging behind on my uh, Disgaea quest. Uh, uh, blame Burnout, I guess, I don't know. 
burnout, depression, whatever you want to call it. I do not even know, but I am back, and I am not sick, and that is a good thing. <laughs> so yeah, that's these guys. Next up, we have the... Wait, what? Okay. <laughs> Next up, we have the Berserker, who has the highest attack aptitude in the game at 155%. Same value as Thursday. He learns 5 sword, 6 axe skills. And his other aptitudes are also very, uh... Well, they're very physically focused, not necessarily offensively focused. Uh, his int is very low. <laughs> His primary ability is Madness, which increases his attack power when he's at critical HP. Super Adrenaline increases stats per enemy unit defeated. Pretty great. His other two abilities are Forgotten Arts, which increases his attack when he's afflicted by Forget. So, um, very focused on physical attacks, but not really the best thing in the world, considering, uh, You'll want to be using special attacks most of the time, just because of the damage formula. His other ability is Fury Strike, which increases crit damage by 100%, but uh, decreases hit by 30% when an axe is equipped. So, uh, very wild attacks, but kind of likely to miss. Also, Fox just said something. What did he say? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Discord! It makes it really easy to interrupt whatever you're doing. But, you know, such is the price for always being connected, except when your friends are unavailable for whatever reason. But still! Next up, we have the Masked Hero, who is a guy. <laughs> He's the only flying-type humanoid, so um, if you want an item world runner, use this guy. His primary ability is Trick Move, which increases his evasion bo bonus per panel moves each turn. Pretty nice. His other three abilities are Power Survival, which increases damage dealt to lower-leveled enemies. Superiority, which decreases damage received from lower leveled enemies. And Chicken Heart, which increases his move by 3, but decreases all of his stats by 30%. I also have Offense Mastery, which is just a very generic ability you can learn from the shop. <laughs> I'm not going to be talking about generic abilities, because they all suck. Okay... Where were we? Right. Masked Hero. He learns 5 Fist and 5 Gun Skills. Um, his primary aptitude is Speed, with a whopping 155%. Again, same level as Thursday. His re his uh, attack and hit are both 100%, so uh, just use whatever you think you like best. Me, uh, being an item world runner who likes to take enemy he's off the gate panel, I prefer Fists. Anyway, let's go and check out his, uh, his things once, uh, past me catches up with present me. His ability to escape is unmatched. Oh yeah, that reminds me, uh, the masked hero is not considered a hero for the purpose of Jennifer's abilities. The more you know... Alright, you're a hero! Changes its target's movement type to flying, so anybody can be a flying type guy, as long as this guy is around. <laughs> 
pretty great, although, uh, for the purposes of item world running, you're probably just better off using a masked hero. <laughs> Pretty great. I like the angel feather effect. It's very Master Bigster. <laughs> Next up is Play Giant Hero, which hits uh, enemies within a plus pattern and inc has increased damage against monsters. Pretty nice. I could see its uses, but really, uh... The Masked Hero is just pretty great all around, at least as far as item world runners go. I'm strong. Laser Beam! Ha 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 ha! Yeah, <laughs> it's pretty great. I woke up the kitty and she is staring at me rather annoyedly. Hi kitty, you need to wake you up. You can go back to sleep, it's fine. Yeah, she's so adorable. <laughs> she's really old, though. She's an old lady. Yes, she is. Okay, next up we have the Majin, one of the most useless units ever. He has no weapon fortes. All of his aptitudes are, um... What are all of his aptitudes? All of his aptitudes max at 85%, not even 100%, 85. And he only has three move and one throw. Yeah, he's been nerfed quite a bit since the days of this guy won, but where he makes up for that is raw stats. Repent. His lowest stat is 22 with SP. Um, his attack is 32 and his other stat his HP is 42, and all of his other stats are 28, which is exceptionally high. Um, aside from that, he has his abilities, which are some of the best in the game. One Man Army is his primary, which uh, doubles all of his stats when he's the last unit available to you. That is to say, um, when you only have one unit left to dispatch, and it's this guy, that's when it kicks in. Revival. Increase... Uh, Revival recovers his HP fully when he's at critical HP at the end of a turn. Absolutely a survivor you there. You could put this on your tank and tank like there's no tomorrow. If it wasn't for the damage formula. <laughs> Vortex lowers all of his aptitudes to 10%, but it doubles his base stats. That's pretty great, I guess. Finally, Violence. Stats increased by 50%, but EXP gain becomes 50%. Put that on a guy at level 9999, and there is not much the enemies can do to stop you. And while I was talking about the Majin, we, I uh, took out an angel and uh, began talking about her. <clears throat> Unlike in Disgaea 2, angels are not flying types. Um, you get them from the DLC by uh, doing, I think it's Item World Command Attack, getting a score of less than 145. As for her aptitudes, um, pretty good across the board. Uh, the highest is Res with 125%, everything else is 115. They're very uh, magic focused, learning 5 uh, bow skills and, let's see here, try elemental skills spells up to the Giga level and healing up to the Terra level, plus Espoir. Oh yeah, this is the other thing the Majin has going for him. A uh, double S level attack. Not very many of those in this game, let me tell you. <laughs> so, uh... I mean, but really, high aptitudes is what you want, given the uh, massive potential from items in this game. Really, in any Disgaea, items is probably where you're going to be getting most of your stats. Do it, do it. <sighs> At any rate, the Angel's abilities are Angel's Protection is her primary, which uh, halves the non-elemental damage to an adjacent ally. 
Angel's Medication, which uh, gives item effects to adjacent allies. At least I'm assuming that's what it means. The uh, description text is kind of vague about that. Oh, Landomize! This is a... Uh, this will become a big favorite of mine in Disgaea 5, but it's not Disgaea 5 yet, so uh, never even mind. It hits everybody except the user. So, it's also really inaccurate. <laughs> so, yeah. Anyway, Angel's Blessing, which uh, cures status effects when healing magic is used. Which kind of makes Espoir redundant, but I can see why you would have it if you need another ability from somebody. And Angel's Flight which increases the effect of healing magic by 10% times panel's move. <laughs> kind of reminds me of uh, Mercy, kind of. Repent. Anyway, that is all of the uh, humanoid units, actually. So once we have finished uh, doing the uh, Angel's unique skills here, that will be it for me. Pray. It was a long journey, but... Uh, we only got a couple more episodes to go, guys. And I'm feeling pretty great, so we might actually be able to do them in RAPID SUCCESSION! Heck yeah. <laughs> eh, depends on how my throat holds out, though. <coughs> Watch close! Thank you, kid! <laughs> I'm not really sure what I'm doing anymore. Excuse me. Think you can beat me? I am really not sure what I'm doing anymore. Oh, miracle of love, that is what I am doing. <laughs> die. Heroes never die! Except for me, <laughs> because I'm Mercy, and I'm pretty terrible except as a healer. Nah, I love Mercy. She's pretty great. Having to switch between her weapons uh, is kind of annoying, but uh, pretty great. Why am I talking about Overwatch? This is Disgaea 3, not Overwatch! <laughs> um, yeah, I think we're done here. Bye! Shall 